Um, okay, so it seems that the numbers have stabilized, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for coming to this talk, The Road Not Taken, uh, Decolonization and Political Imagination in Mozambique, circa 1960 to 1974, um, from Professor Ben Mashaba. Um, so I'll start by introducing him um, and then we'll go into the talk which will last around 45 minutes and then we'll have uh, a, a, or an hour for the talk and we'll have around 45 minutes uh, for a QA. and a um, So the Q&A is disabled while the talk is happening so please save your questions to the Q&A section um, and send them in the chat um, and I'll read them aloud to Professor Mushava and we'll have a very generative uh, discussion hopefully. Um, so I'll start by introducing him and then we'll go into the conversation. Um, so Professor Ben Mashava is a historian of colonial and post-colonial Africa and he joined Yale's history department in 2020. Um, he was raised and educated in Mozambique and received his PhD at the University of Michigan in 2018. His research focuses on liberation struggles, decolonization, nation building, socialism, and socialist experiments in Africa. And his current book manuscript, The Morality of Revolution, Reeducation Camps, and the Carceral Regime in Socialist Mozambique, 1974 to 1990, examines the politics of public morality, carcerality, punishment, and citizenship in post-independence Mozambique. Um, his research has been supported by fellowships from the Social Science Research Council, the Guggenheim Foundation, um, among others. Uh, before coming to Yale, Professor Mashava was a Costin Link postdoctoral post fellow in the Society of Fellows at Princeton University between 2018 and 2020, and a history lecturer at University Eduardo Mondlane in Maputo, Mozambique. Um, and his works uh, can be found in the Journal of African History and the Journal of Southern African Studies. Um, so without further ado, I'll let Professor Mochava take it away and enlighten us with his talk. Thank you, Bayan. Uh, thank you very much. I want to thank Nora and uh, my big brother, Kajitan, for inviting me um, uh, and giving me the, the, the opportunity to share my work um, in this wonderful Africanist community, which I'm, I'm really thrilled uh, to be part of. Um, what I'm sharing today is the initial work I have been doing uh, for my second book, and most of it is still uh, quite tentative. And I'm, I'm really eager um, to hear your questions uh, as they will uh, surely help me think through uh, some of the questions that I'm exploring and the story that I want to tell. Allow me to share my slide. On April 25, uh, 1974, a coup d'etat in Lisbon overthrew the Portuguese fascist regime, leading to the sudden end of Portuguese colonial rule in Africa. More than a decade of armed struggle in Angola, in Guinea-Bissau, um, and in Mozambique had exhausted the resolve of the Portuguese army, uh, particularly its junior officer corps. Eager to rid their nation of the overdue colonial burden, the coup plotters compelled the new Portuguese uh, government to uh, initiate negotiations for the decolonization uh, and transfer of power. In Guinea-Bissau, the Portuguese had very little to negotiate um, because the war uh, had already been lost and the PGC had declared independence the year before. In Angola, three nationalist movements uh, uh, contended for supremacy and, and, and Portugal's attempt uh, to bridge their differences failed, uh, leading to civil war even before the colonization. In Mozambique, the outcome of the coup uh, favored the Mozambique Liberation Front, uh, Frelimo. Some of the leading uh, coup plotters and high-ranking members uh, of the new Portuguese government had been born and raised in the settler colony of Mozambique. After quick and quite amiable negotiations uh, in the Zambian uh, capital of Lusaka, on September 7, 1974, uh, the Portuguese conceded to Frelimo's terms and recognized the liberation movement as the only legitimate uh, representative of the people of Mozambique. Um, and two weeks later, a Frelimo dominated transition government took place um, and with listless and uh, quite sporadic cooperation of Portuguese authorities. 
uh, Frelimo installed a dictatorial socialist regime in printed addicts and uh, sort of incandescent public statements. The new rulers outlined um, the road to be traveled from then on and a highly centralized uh, one party system, um, a state led uh, command economy and no civil liberties. Mozambique went from one repressive regime to another. Now the historiography of Mozambique has gravitated around the roads taken before and after the colonization. The oppressive nature of colonial rule has, uh, is well documented um, and the challenges of, uh, of post-coloniality have also been uh, quite mapped. And Joel, John Stoll's uh, aptly titled book, A Difficult Road, uh, quite captured uh, uh, well the roadblocks that shaped Mozambique's transition from colony to sovereign nation. Yet, uh, like most scholars of this generation, uh, who still believed in the, in the liberating power um, uh, of African socialism. Uh, so was quite blind to the repressive nature of the post-colonial state. And when mentioned, um, the violence that the ruling elites inflicted on the populations they liberated from colonialism was cast as a policy mistake. Uh, one among many um, stumbles in the road uh, to build a just society. In my first book, Manuscript, uh, the morality of revolution, uh, I address this oversight um, by showing that the post-colonial state reproduced the same uh, repressive mechanisms of colonial rule, even if the discursive archetypes uh, of its governmentality uh, were rooted in the liberating uh, flourishes of socialism. In the road not taken, um, I take one step back uh, to tell a different story. One that is about possibilities, um, about dreams dreamed but not realized. In the six months between uh, the fall of the Portuguese colonial regime um, and Filimo's takeover, multiple political avenues uh, seemed open. A number of political parties emerged in the, uh, in the capital city of Lorenzo March um, and the second city of Bahia. And this was uh, unprecedented in the history of Portuguese Africa. Unlike British and French colonial rule, Portuguese colonialism gave no space for African political formations. Portugal's unwillingness to decolonize um, and the regime's tight policing of the public sphere uh, led nationalist movements to consolidate in exile. Like its counterparts in Angola and Guinea-Bissau, Frelimo was founded in Tanzania not necessarily as a political party, but as a coalition front of exiled political uh, activists who shared one goal, and that was the liberation um, of Mozambique uh, from colonial rule. The 10 years of armed struggle crystallized the front's vision for Mozambique, a vision that triumphed uh, partly by suppressing other uh, alternatives. The political parties that emerged after the April coup expressed for the first time the multiple possible roads that Mozambique could take after the colonization. And this part is, in my opinion, represented the genuine work of political imagination uh, by those who witnessed the end of colonial rule. Their political aspirations uh, were ignored um, in the Lusaka agreement uh, that established Lima as the only legitimate political entity in Mozambique. We are often told that democracy in Africa came through the demands of international financial institutions, uh, keen on shifting the continent from state-led developmentalism to neoliberalism in the late 1980s um, and early 1990s. In Mozambique, the proof is the opening of the political sphere um, in the late uh, 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 1980s as part of the structural adjustment programs, which led to the emergence um, uh, of political parties uh, in 1990. Now, in the road note taken, I demonstrate that there was a moment in which uh, the political sphere was wide open in Mozambique. One led not by external demands, by, by, but by the genuine um, uh, endogenous political thinking. While the prospect of the colonization um, uh, suddenly on, on, on site, both Africans and, and white settlers wrestled with ideas of democracy and the political futures that could best accommodate uh, the racial uh, class, uh, ethnocultural differences uh, of Mozambique society 
and deal with the legacy of colonialism. Short-lived and uh, experimental um, as it was, that moment remains the most democratic and politically dynamic in the history of Mozambique. This is not to say that it was uh, peaceful, quite the opposite. Uh, it was uh, tumultuous um, and violent, yet it reflected the passions of those who argued and debated about what decolonization could be and what independence should be. For many, independence uh, meant political pluralism, uh, multiracial uh, sociability, uh, freedom of association, freedom of speech and mobility, uh, decent work and better pay, um, and the opportunity to engage in uh, entrepreneurial economic activities without the, 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 the racial impediments that underpin colonial rule. Yet for others, independence meant the chance to reconfigure uh, the relationship with Portugal by simply becoming autonomous within the structures of governance of the former colonial power in a kind of transcontinental uh, transnational commonwealth, uh, similar to the, the one that was proposed uh, by Francophone African elites back in the 1950s. Even those who endorsed Frulimo as the only uh, legitimate political force um, capable of, ru of ruling Mozambique uh, still imagined a more plural uh, society that preserved some of the uh, political, economic, um, and symbolic relations uh, with Portugal. None of these possible votes were taken. Yet, I argue, they cast a long shadow over the path that Mozambique took after the colonization. As Frulimo shut down uh, alternative political alignments in favor of a top-down project of, 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 of nation building, uh, the political fervency that captured the imaginaries of those who dreamed a different Mozambique for six months appended in many ways uh, the new regime. Opposition to Frelimo rose not only from external forces seeking to undermine uh, the socialist experiment, as previous scholarship argued, um, but from people's realization that independence betrayed uh, the country imagined uh, at the dawn of colonial rule. Now, it is a difficult task uh, to capture what people imagined to be possible um, in the dying days of colonial rule in Africa the anxieties um, and hopes for better futures, precisely because we know what came with independence, and that is the triumph of the territorial uh, nation uh, sovereignty and its sociopolitical ills. As Fred Cooper noted uh, several decades ago, the difficulty is compounded by the tendency that was predominant in the time of his writing, but is still present today, to see decolonization as a moment of triumph and the post-colonial reality as a failure. These binary narratives preclude our ability to see decolonization uh, as a process that opened and foreclosed political possibilities um, and configurations of power, not from hindsight, uh, but from the vantage point of those who experienced the process. And to grasp this sense of process, as Cooper points, uh, historians of African decolonization must ask, how wide were those possibilities? Um, how much did actions taken at any of the many conjunctures, uh, narrow trajectories and, and alternatives? And Cooper insisted that in thinking about such questions, um, we can never distance ourselves uh, entirely from our present, but we can imperfectly look at different people in their different presents, imagining their futures. And many scholars have taken uh, the lead from Cooper and have shed light on the wide uh, net of political possibilities um, that the downing of colonial imperialism engendered in colonial dominions in Africa and across the world. Working within and across uh, territorial boundaries, uh, scholars have shown the diverse array of political imagination uh, that decolonization opened and foreclosed uh, from transcontinental uh, federalism to uh, Pan-African solidarities uh, from cosmopolitan unionism uh, and labor activism to uh, socialist internationalism uh, and Cold War uh, non-alignment. Whether these imaginings and possibilities were realized or not is not the point. As Gary Wilder points out, these possible decolonial futures uh, were an integral part uh, of an epochal process 
of global restructuring that unfolded on a vast political terrain inhabited by diverse actors and agencies that warrant a historical examination. So taking the cue from um, these insightful new scholarship uh, on decongestion, uh, the roadmap taken seeks to capture the moment of Mozambique's decongestion through the lived experience of those who saw the window of opportunities open and close in the course of six months. Unlike most of the new scholarship uh, on decongestion, which focuses on the sort of the intellectual histories of this process, uh, my work is more of a social history of decongestion. Although the key moment of my study is the six uh, uh, months between the fall of the colonial, of colonial rule and Philemus' uh, takeover in 1974, my chronology stretches uh, uh, further back to the early 1990s. Because if the tumultuous six months of transition uh, put those possibilities within reach, the political imaginary that produced them evolved in the late period of Portuguese colonial rule. And this was a period in which Portugal reformed its colonial policy in response to Frelimo's armed insurgency. And although the regime maintained uh, its tight grip on the political sphere, uh, uh, crushing any form of anti-colonial activism, its economic and social reforms opened up some channels uh, of social mobility for Africans, um, thus creating an incipient uh, but growing uh, urban middle class. Unwittingly, uh, the Portuguese reforms in the 1950s and 1960s, which comparatively speaking came uh, quite very, very late compared to, to, to those undertaken in the French uh, and British uh, columns two decades earlier. Nevertheless, they engendered a closer link uh, between the small section of progressive uh, settlers um, and this rising African middle class, particularly in the capital city of Lawrence Marx, uh, present day Maputo. If educated Africans uh, sought to expand the networks of European patronage, um, indispensable for social mobility in a very racially uh, policed society like Mozambique, uh, in building relations with Africans, pro progressive settlers uh, sought validation to their ambiguous uh, anti-colonial sentiments. The increased nervousness of the regime uh, and its repressive politics brought these two groups into political collaboration. While deeply attached to Portugal, uh, progressive settlers loathed the fascist regime and the lack of civil liberties. Their aspirations were somewhat aligned with the colonial bourgeoisie um, or the colonial business class who like you know, their counterparts in South Africa or Rhodesia several decades earlier, distrusted the metropolitan power and wanted more political autonomy for, for the colony. They comprised the most educated uh, and white color bourgeois segment of colonial society and they occupied um, um, uh, such professions as lawyers, medical doctors, writers of all, uh, and artists of all sorts. Despite the uh, insidiousness of the uh, state police, uh, they took advantage of the regime's ambivalence uh, towards settler opposition in the colonies. While the fascist regime could repress its citizens in the metropole unhindered, um, in the colonies, the equation was different. Repressing whites in the colonies undermined all the ideological principles that sustained Portuguese colonialism. It was more important for the regime to preserve the impression of a united uh, European community and their civilizational superiority before the natives than repressing dissent. So aware of the regime's hesitancy in handling their dissenting politics in Africa, uh, progressive settlers had far more space of maneuver uh, than their metropolitan counterparts. So it is not surprising that the machinations that led to the overthrow of the regime in 1974 began in the colonies um, and were largely carried out uh, by people from the colonies. So associations uh, with Africans, timid and limited uh, though it was, um, was an act of dissent. It not only undermined the, the, the racial barriers that the Portuguese regime sought to keep intact in the colonies, it also gave progressive settlers a more symbolic uh, attachment to Africa. And soon after the, the Apple coup, 
uh, they coalesced around a timid political organization, uh, which they called uh, Democrata de Mozambique, um, or, or, or Democrats of Mozambique. And I say timid because they never really assumed uh, uh, themselves to be a political party. I will have more to say about this in a bit. On their part, uh, the African urban intelligentsia widened the scale of its nationalism by coming into closer contact uh, with progressive settlers. As Frelimo struggled advanced uh, in the far north, uh, the state uh, police installed a near state of siege in the African quarters, uh, arresting Frelimo sympathizers and collaborators, and just about anyone suspected of anti-colonial um, uh, uh, sentiments. Because back in 1964, when Frelimo launched its armed struggle, um, a small group of guerrilla operatives led by Matthias Mbowan, uh, we'll come back to this name um, uh, much later, went all the way from Tanzania to the capital uh, 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 in Lorenzo Marx to plant the seeds of insurgency in the South. And that is at the heart of the colonial administration. Now this was, um, um, uh, to be Frelimo's fourth, so-called fourth military region um, um, after the three that were already in action uh, uh, up in the north. And strategically speaking, this was a disastrous miscalculation um, on the part of Frelimo leaders because in just about a few months after the insurgents arrived in the capital and began mobilizing militants, uh, the Portuguese secret police uh, uncovered the underground networks um, and arrested hundreds of would-be insurgents. And such was the efficiency uh, of the police network of informants in the African quarters, but also within Frelimo. And the Portuguese regime held this, uh, this operation a huge victory and uh, in a well-publicized uh, trial, uh, condemned the defendants to long-term uh, imprisonment. And the Democrats of Mozambique put in uh, a very impressive team of attorneys uh, in defense of the nationalist uh, activists. And despite their failure, um, their act of defiance uh, against the colonial regime uh, struck an important chord uh, among Africans who came to see them as political allies. And in the years of the trial from 1966 until the collapse uh, of, the, of the colonial regime in 1974, both Frelimo in Tanzania and the remaining underground activists in the, in the South uh, lost contact with each other. And this is a very, very important uh, point um, um, in my argument. Because Frelimo focused um, more on the northern frontier <clears throat> of its struggle, uh, while the leaders of the uh, failed uh, fourth military region languished um, in jail. So this gulf of almost eight years had significant consequences um, in the development of political thinking um, in Mozambique. While Frelimo underwent a revolutionary transformation from a purely anti-colonial movement into a socialist uh, Maoist-oriented vanguard party, political activism in the South moved in a different position, uh, in a different direction, in alliance um, with the moderate uh, politics of, of progressive settlers um, under the umbrella of the Democrats of Mozambique. I'm using moderate and progressive sort of uh, uh, interchangeably uh, because it is uh, quite difficult to uh, disentangle the two given uh, their different political um, uh, positions uh, as I will illustrate uh, later on. Now, if the two sides retain the idea that they were on the same side of the trenches, and in fact, uh, the Southern activists still saw themselves as members of Fulemo. Their visions for the future of Mozambique grew uh, diametrically opposed. Fulemo started their struggle in the early 60s with the simple goal of pressuring the Portuguese regime uh, to consider a dialogue towards majority rule. By the late 1960s, early 70s, their goals went beyond regime change um, and aimed at the profound transformation of Mozambican society along the lines of Afro-Marxism. They combined political vanguardism with the responsibilities of a proto-state um, in anticipation for when uh, they would be in power. And this change, this sort of revolutionary change was lost to the Southern activists 
who expected Filimu to be in power, but within a democratic structure that included progressive settlers and preserved the symbolic, economic, uh, and administrative ties with Portugal. So arising out of the long years of collaboration between uh, progressive settlers and, and African activists, this political possibility um, had already infiltrated the, the junior ranks of the Portuguese army, where dissatisfaction with a colonial war that seemed to have no, uh, no end on sight uh, loomed. And the plotters who brought the Portuguese regime down in, uh, in April 1974 were partly animated by, by this possibility. And uh, they sought to put it on the agenda uh, as they formed the political body uh, in Lisbon to oversee uh, the transition to a new government. And this body was the Junta de Salvação Nacional um, or National uh, Salvation Board. I will not relate the, the story of, of the coup here. Suffice to say is that uh, after overthrowing the fascist uh, regime without shedding any blood, uh, the junior officers did not take power directly, but entrusted the GSN uh, to negotiate the ceasefire uh, with the African nationalist movements and initiate the process of decolonization. The head of the board was General Antonio Spinga, one of the three top officers um, in the army and uh, formerly in charge uh, of the war effort in Guinea-Bissau. A few months before the coup, Spinola published uh, an um, sort of incendiary book um, entitled uh, Portugal and the Future, which propelled him from uh, a pillar of the regime into its most outspoken critic. And some scholars argue that the book was the last nail in the coffin of the regime, but I think it's more complicated than that. Having led the war effort in Guinea-Bissau, the most difficult uh, of all war fronts for the Portuguese, not only because of the brilliance of Amilcar Cabral, uh, but mostly due to the geography uh, uh, and the marshy terrain uh, of the region. Spinola captured the dissatisfaction about um, the war among his embattled junior officers who were already plotting um, against the regime. As already mentioned, some of these officers uh, were first or second generation settlers in Angola and Mozambique. Like uh, Otelo Saraiva de Carvalho, uh, the, the chief strategist uh, behind the coup, uh, who shared the mindset of progressive settlers about the future of the colonies. And Spinola put these ideas um, in print um, in his book. And he outlined a two-stage proposal for the future of the colonies, namely a first stage of progressive autonomy, not independence yet, um, that could last between 10 to 20 years, um, um, to be followed by a second uh, phase um, um, in which the colonies would have, um, by, by the time in which the colonies would have, would have gained political, political maturity to be able to, to, to contend um, uh, elections uh, and choose their, their destiny. By, by all accounts, Portugal was very, very late um, in these, um, 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 in that uh, these are the same solutions that uh, Britain and France introduced uh, uh, some 30, 40 years before. Uh, yet in those six months that followed the fall of the Portuguese um, uh, colonial regime, the GSN proposal would animate the political debate uh, about the road to be taken um, in the colonies. In my research um, thus far, I have counted 20 political parties um, and organizations that sprouted almost overnight um, after the April coup in Mozambique. The country had lived, uh, had lived for nearly 70 years uh, under fascist regime uh, with no space for, for the, uh, the civil liberties that other colonies enjoyed, um, including apartheid South Africa. The last free newspaper had been printed uh, back in 1929. So suddenly people could assemble um, and talk politics. Uh, the secret police uh, abandoned the scene and with it went to the censorship of the press. And the sense of uh, public relief um, and excitement is actually uh, easily gleaned from the volume of publications um, between April uh, and September 1974. 
for the first time, news was no longer confined to a city uh, or a small district. And everyone seemed to have an opinion to share about the future of the country. So the once dormant and largely pro-regime press uh, became the most important site of political argument and, um, and legitimation. And newspapers and uh, radio stations, uh, parties and all sorts of organizations announced the existence um, and disclosed their political programs, uh, mobilized potential militants and sympathizers um, and called for rallies uh, and demonstrations. Now, some of these parties uh, had but a handful of members, um, barely enough to put a quorum. Others had so many members that, uh, with such diversity of political positions that they could not really function um, and they soon, uh, soon collapsed uh, or, or split. Now, without idealizing or romanticizing this period, um, I cannot but appreciate uh, the vibrancy of those uh, six months of absolute freedom and, and hope for, for a better future. I mean, it took another 25 years uh, uh, of dictatorship and civil war uh, for people in Mozambique to feel uh, the sweet taste of freedom again. <clears throat> Has the, 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 um, um, uh, the interest uh, that I have uh, on this particular period. I have categorized the various political formations um, uh, that argued over the meaning and shape of decolonization in those six months um, in three rough groups. And this is all tentative, namely independent, pro freedom and anti freedom Now, this categorization is not based on ideology. These parties uh, and organizations included members uh, of all ideological persuasions. I mean, communists, socialists, anarchists, utilitarians, centrists, conservatives, etc. My categorization is based on the two main questions on the table for all of them. The first one was, what role should the organization that had been fighting for independence for 10 years play um, in a post-colonial Mozambique? And incredible as this may sound, this question has never been raised in it inverts the historical narrative um, about this period, precisely because this period had, uh, had always been portrayed from the vantage point um, uh, of Berlin. And, and the second question was how to deal with the racial legacy of Portuguese colonialism and uh, uh, to hold the country together without following uh, the path of, of Rhodesia and South Africa where independence resulted in, in white minority rule or the example of Algeria, where independence came at the cost of uh, open uh, racial violence and the uh, inglorious uh, exit of the, of the PNRs. By independent, I mean those parties that emerged out of the uh, established circles of political activism um, and were mostly animated by the prospect of elections. And they addressed the, the, the racial question by assembling members from all, soci uh, all social groups um, in Mozambique. And uh, it's important to know that for, for a colony where a few days earlier such public gatherings uh, were not only a political offense but um, a condemned breach of colonial etiquette, the social maker uh, of these parties uh, was not short uh, of revolutionary. Really. The most significant of, uh, of these parties was the group who needed the Mozambique or the United Group of Mozambique. And the party's objective, as it stated in its uh, uh, statutes, was the attainment of progressive political autonomy within political institutions in forced into Portuguese space. Like some Francophone African elites uh, 30 years before, the leaders of Gomu simply wanted to build their own huts within uh, their father's compound. And this, they believed, was the only way to preserve um, the bonds of the various social groups in the country and the material advantage uh, of a European connection. And the party was led by two people who not only had profound dif uh, political differences, uh, but they, they really hated each other. I'm yet to figure out how on earth they decided to work together um, in the first place. Because while the lawyer Massimo Diaz uh, fashioned the party as a non militarized version of Limo, uh, the high school teacher, Joana Simeon, uh, regarded Frelimo's struggle uh, totally unnecessary. 
the only female figure in this story, uh, and in fact, the only uh, uh, female politician in the history of Mozambique, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Joana Simeon thought that Folimo should end the war and prepare itself to condemn, to contend uh, the elections with other political parties um, uh, on equal footing. And for a short while, Gumu drew large crowds in Lorenzo Marx and Beira and seemed poised to become um, a serious player um, in the country's political life. But the differences between the two leaders came to the fore and they split each from in his own party. But the pro Limo groups had played a, a, a hand in the downfall uh, of Gumu by deploying provocateurs uh, in their rallies, precisely because they reckoned the growing popularity of this independent party. The main pro Limo uh, groups were the Democrats uh, of Mozambique um, and their African allies, um, the former political prisoners and those who continue to um, operate um, underground in the South. The majority of these uh, uh, former political prisoners had been you know, released from jail uh, immediately after the coup. And they were joined by high school um, and university students, the majority of whom um, uh, were white, which shows the, the, the racial nature of the Portuguese regime even um, uh, in its dying days. These groups never formed a political party, uh, mainly because ideologically uh, they were um, a more uh, heterogeneous bunch. For example, university students uh, were divided between um, Maoists and, and radical Maoists and Orthodox Marxists um, and all sorts of uh, ideological leanings. But overall, they sought to campaign and uh, mobilize support for Fulema in light of the GSM proposal which was to create a transitional government that would, in the distant future, uh, lead Mozambique to independence, if the country so wished. And in this regard, this group was not necessarily different from the independent parties, the only difference being that they believed that Falima was the only force with the political credentials uh, to carry out uh, the GSM program. Of course, they did not know that Falima uh, did not subscribe to the GSM program and they would soon reject it outright. The fact is that Fulimo was not widely known um, in, in, in South Central Mozambique, despite the 10 years of armed struggle. The largely effective Portuguese counterinsurgency kept the majority of the people ignorant about the war. Among the larger settler community of about 200,000 people, um, nearly as, as large as the Rhodesian settlers, uh, Frelimo was but a band of terrorists uh, who carried hit and run attacks in the far north, uh, but posed no serious threat to the, uh, to the peace and prosperity of the colony. And the Democrats believed that the biggest and most urgent task was the political education of settlers, whom they considered uh, politically uh, immature um, and numbed uh, by the long years of fascist oppression um, and censorship of the press. So their biggest fear was the possibility of a Rhodesia-like uh, unilateral declaration of independence, which was already uh, uh, on the cards among some far-right settlers. And to carry their agenda, they mounted one of the most effective political coups um, within a coup, which was to take control of the press um, and uh, inundate uh, the newspapers uh, with images of, of Frelimo leaders and vitriolic, uh, vitriolic attacks on, 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 other, on other parties, particularly Gumu. Now, I have not established how they really managed to, put, uh, to pull all this out, um, but by early May, uh, the major newspapers had entirely uh, uh, new, new editorial boards, um, and all of those members um, uh, um, were, were active Democrats. It is also interesting to know that in those very early days, uh, few people knew how figures like Samora Michelle or other prominent Fulimo figures uh, look like. And the images that they circulated were largely based on descriptions by some of the former political prisoners who had known the men back in the 1960s. And judging from uh, these early attempts to produce the iconography of the party's leadership, uh, the results could not have been uh, more disastrous, as we can see from uh, this placard right here. Uh, 
as Drew Thompson argues uh, in his you know, uh, recently published monograph on the history of photography um, uh, in, in Mozambique, visual representation was a key instrument in Frolimo's political work. And they quickly realized that their supporters in Lorenzo Martin Vera were doing a terrible job um, on this department. And so they sent packages of, um, um, of their illustrated bulletins and, and pamphlets uh, from Tanzania. But th this visual misrepresentation um, uh, of Frilimo in those early days might seem an insignificant uh, um, um, uh, aspect to, to, to point out, but it reflects a much larger issue uh, that remained somewhat dormant um, until Frilimo came to power. And that is that the political aspirations of the pro-Frilimo groups were not aligned with Frilimo. And for my own archival research uh, thus far and in interviews with former members of these groups, um, I'm convinced that they simply did not know what Frilimo stood for at the time. The pamphlets and, pro, uh, and propaganda material they received from Frilimo provided little clue uh, into the party's revolutionary ideology. From what they read, Frilimo's struggle was against the fascist colonial regime, um, not against the Portuguese people. Um, the society Frilimo wanted to build would eliminate racism and socioeconomic uh, symmetries. Uh, they talked about the emancipation of women, um, the end of exploitation of men by men, civil freedoms and equal justice and opportunity for everyone regard regardless of race, uh, ethnicity or religion. And these were progressive ideas uh, which the Democrats and their African allies um, had always uh, stood for. But what was not clear was what these ideas would mean uh, and how, how they would look like um, in a socialist regime. And I'm not suggesting here that Frelimo deceived them. Um, I have not yet consulted Frelimo's archives uh, to see um, what they thought um, has uh, the Democrats were working uh, hard in the cities uh, on their behalf. Maybe uh, when I, I get to that, that stage of my research, um, I'll be able to, to clarify some of these questions. Um, in, his, in official historiography, um, the, the work of the Democrats has received very, very little uh, consideration. Yet, without their work, Filimo would not have gained the popularity that it enjoyed in those crucial moments after the fall of the Portuguese regime. The political vision of the pro Filimo groups uh, was best articulated by Antonio Gameda Sancho in a series of open letters uh, published in the then uh, quite progressive magazine, uh, Tempo or Times of Lorenzo Marx. And Almeida Santos argued that the only viable pathway for Mozambique was a multiracial society under a Frelimo led government. He was convinced that Frelimo would not only guarantee the civil liberties uh, expected um, of any democratic system, but would also preserve what he called the ethnic, economic, and managerial equilibrium of the colonial period. That is, the success of the country depended on maintaining ties with Portugal. He told his fellow white compatriots that they should either accept this formula or take one of the two uh, other available options. One, declare a UDI or, uh, or leave the country both of which, in his opinion, were suicidal. I have mentioned that the Democrats were both uh, progressive and moderate. I'm not yet sure if these are workable categories, um, and there's more work that I need to do to unpack their political thinking, but they oscillated between um, very limited leftist uh, aspirations, especially in the form of a single party system under Frelimo and a transnational form of democracy that linked the destinies of post-colonial Mozambique and the post-colonial fascist Portugal. Unlike the Francophone African and Antillean elites who campaigned for uh, self-determination without nation sovereignty some 40 years before and argued that such a political dispensation would improve metropolitan and imperial citizens, uh, both at the material and spiritual level. For the Democrats, the decolonization of Mozambique and other Portuguese colonies was the main factor in the liberation of Portugal from fascism. So democracy in this case would not descend from the metropole to the imperial overseas, but the way around. If the colonies liberated Portugal, 
by orchestrating the coup and in the process liberated themselves, a point that Fulimo uh, leaders would take to the negotiation table uh, in Lusaka. Democracy would also emanate from the former, uh, 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 from, from, from the colonies. On a more personal level, the political interdependence between Portugal um, and our former colonies offered settlers the comfort and security of a transnational citizenship. Because different from their minority neighbors in Rhodesia um, and South Africa, and despite their anti-fascism, Portuguese, uh, Portuguese settlers never really developed um, a sense of white nationalism or nativism, if you will. They remained above all Portuguese in Africa. And they wanted to remain Portuguese um, in an autonomous, uh, independent Mozambique. And this is what Almeida Santos sought to achieve uh, by proposing um, an alliance with Fulimo. In May 1974, um, uh, he, he was invited to join the new Portuguese government um, in, the, in the very important position of Minister of, of uh, Interterritorial Relations. This was the former minister, uh, minister of Colonial Affairs. And here he had more influence and power to actually work out uh, his vision uh, for the colonies uh, and put it in action. And he was a key player um, in the negotiations uh, that led uh, uh, Portugal to transfer power to Fulimon. Uh, but that was as far um, as, as his influence could go, he could not really control what Fulimon would do with its power. So this cartoon uh, by Paul Fort, uh, which I hope to use as a front cover of the book, um, is the best illustration of how the Democrats of Mozambique labored to put Fulimon in power. Here is uh, Portugal's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mario Soares, uh, and Filimo's President, Samora Machel, taking the first steps in sort of embrace grand style after the Bizarre Agreement, while the Democrats clear the way, uh, chasing uh, all the other political parties inside Mozambique. It's interesting that DMs are not uh, represented in equal footing uh, with Filimo. Like, like other parties, they're sort of small, almost insignificant. It's a statement uh, as to how they view their role um, in the process and the embrace between the two leaders um, was somewhat uh, a triumph of the vision um, articulated by Almeida Sanders for a while. But one cannot fail to see the repressive side uh, of this representation for as the carpet rolls um, and opens the road uh, for the new regime, it also crashes um, uh, the opposition and shuts the door uh, to alternative possibilities. Again, uh, it is challenging for me um, to do justice to this representation precisely because um, I know what came next. Uh, for example, the figure that is being uh, struck by the neck with this broom um, uh, is Joana Simeon. And um, uh, as soon as Fulimo took, uh, took power, she was arrested, uh, incarcerated in a re-education camp um, and executed for treason. Of particular note are uh, 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 these figures uh, right here, um, which are sort of represented as the, you know, the American KKK, who are trying to stop the process through acts of terrorism. And these are the anti frilimo groups in my tentative classification. The unilateral uh, handover of power to Frilimo um, and the dismissal of all political parties emboldened um, the anti frilimo uh, sentiment um, in southern Mozambique, south central Mozambique. Um, and these groups, uh, 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 um, uh, their political aspirations really did not go beyond uh, preventing uh, the Nationalist Party from taking power. Although a few of them uh, uh, included Africans, the majority were comprised of conservative settlers um, and army veterans who fought against Fulimo in the north. And they were quick to denounce the Lusaka agreement uh, as a betrayal by Portugal. And they sought to impede uh, Frelimo from entering Mozambique uh, by acts of intimidation and terror. Some of their names uh, suited their aims. Um, they were called Dragons da Morte or Dragons of Death um, or Mozambican Armed Action. And in May, for example, they blew up the headquarters uh, of the pro-Frelimo uh, pro student organizations and the printing presses of the newspapers controlled by the Democrats. It was uh, a new way of silencing political enemies. 
And has the negotiations between Portugal and Fulimo indicated that the country would inevitably have a majority black government under Fulimo? These groups uh, went uh, from uh, protest to, to despair. Because on September 7, as the news came that Portugal had settled uh, the matter with Fulimo, they occupied um, the, the airport in Lawrence Marx and the main radio station downtown and called on South Africa and Rhodesia uh, to intervene in their favor. And their supporters also joined them by the thousands uh, hoping to see South African troops uh, march towards the capital. Now, the possibility of a South African intervention was real. Um, and some powerful figures within the settler far right um, and a few colonial tycoons like, you know, Shambhali Mo or George Chapin were working um, around this possibility. But they failed to convince the South Africans, uh, the South African securocrats, who saw no real potential um, in this white insurrection. Again, uh, I have not done uh, work on the South African archives for this period, and I expect their diplomatic files to be revealing, uh, to say the least. What is clear from what I have seen is that unlike Angola, where three nationalist movements contended for power, um, all with a significant African following, in Mozambique, the South Africans calculated that Shulimo commanded a more unified following. In other words, there were people in Angola to work with, um, like Unitas Jonas Sabindi, hence their decision to, uh, to intervene in Angola, uh, whereas Mozambique offered no such, uh, no such advantage. Although most of the independent parties ended up joining the insurrection um, at the radio station downtown, um, as it became clear that uh, no elections would be held and that Fralimo would reign supreme with absolute powers as the previous regime, the insurrection presented no significant alternatives uh, to warrant foreign uh, intervention. Now, some scholars have um, referred to this insurrection uh, as a coup attempt um, against Fralimo. Although it was disruptive and it was responsible for the racial violence that took place um, in the city, it was way much less, uh, uh, um, 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 it wasn't really, really a, a, a coup against the, 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 the incoming power. The insurrection, in my understanding, was a desperate, uncoordinated act by people who saw no place for them um, in a Fralimula at Mozambique. It was more an act of fear uh, than a political plot uh, by people who came to Africa empty-handed in the 1940s and were now on the verge of losing their material and racial privileges. But unlike the PNRs uh, of French Algeria or their Rhodesian neighbors, they lacked the political organization and economic power to influence events um, in their favor. And the words of one of the leaders uh, of the insurrection, uh, Valesco Grillo, is a member of a party called FICO, I stay, um, is quite illustrative uh, of this desperation. And he told his, uh, his audience that, I quote, in Africa, we risk everything for the survival of Portugal as, as a nation. But now that uh, we were set free, now that we have been given a new environment of freedom of relations, please, please do not expel us. Do not throw furious and straight out unto us. But as desperate settlers um, and a coalition of, of parties gathered at the radio station and called on Portuguese army to join their sort of ill-defined coast. On the other side of the city, in the African quarters, uh, thousands of people uh, were celebrating the Lusaka agreement in a mass rally organized by the Democrats. And upon hearing about the seizure of the radio station and the airport, uh, bands of young men armed themselves with con conventional weapons, machetes, uh, pangas, etc., and marched towards downtown. And for three days, the Democrats and their pro Lima allies, together with the Portuguese army, prevented the clash, uh, which uh, could have, you know, resulted um, um, in, a, in a huge, uh, in a bigger catastrophe than, than the one that happened. But the signs were clear that Mozambique would not have a peaceful transition and the multiracial democracy that animated the activism uh, of so many people. And the most heartfelt uh, appeal for a politics that could hold the country together came from the pen of Domingo Zaroca, uh, a lawyer, a former political prisoner, and one of the main leaders of Lorenzo Marx's African intelligentsia. 
And this open letter was published on the very day that Fulimo and the Portuguese delegation agreed on the terms of the colonization in Lusaka. Aroca encapsulated all the contradictions of the democratic vision uh, of his pro-Fulimo peers. He sought to reconcile the one-party system that his support for Fulimo entailed while hoping for the party to uphold the highest democratic principles of tolerance and, and dialogue. There were no magical remedies uh, for the ills of the colonial regime uh, and its legacy um, and the racial divide uh, that it engendered in Mozambique. Yet he argued there could be, uh, uh, there could, could, they could not be, be ignored uh, and, and Fulimu's task was, was quite gigantic. Because in the beautiful cities uh, and countryside farms, about 200,000 settlers lived a life of, uh, of comfort um, and were in total control of the administrative and economic life uh, of the country. In the Shandy towns and rural areas, about 12 million uh, exploited and disenfranchised Africans lived in poverty. So bridging the gap between the two communities and build uh, a multiracial society um, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that could, uh, uh, could hold the country together um, could, uh, uh, needed big gaps um, in his words, um, uh, needed refrained egos, um, a new sense of brotherhood um, and forgiveness. Could Fulimo rise to the occasion um, and take this responsibility to counsel and rule? Uh, could violence be avoided? <clears throat> On the other hand, uh, Aroca emboldened, um, uh, emboldened the, the timidity, uh, I would say, um, and self-righteousness of his group. He proposed a path that could lead the country to a better future while remaining uh, detached from the actual work of bridging the racial and, and class gap that he reckoned was the biggest task ahead. Many people expect that he would uh, uh, occupy a ministerial position in the first Fulimo government. Um, and in fact, for a long time, the Portuguese believed that he would um, uh, one day become Fulimo's president, um, given his uh, um, qualifications and the high esteem that he enjoyed uh, among uh, um, uh, political activists in the Western Marx, especially after the assassination of uh, Eduardo Mondlane, uh, Fulimo's founding president. But when this invitation came uh, to join Fulimo's government in late September, he simply turned it down. By this time, it was clear uh, to everyone that the progressive aspirations of the Democrats uh, would be pursued under the ideological mantle of Marxism-Leninism. And Aroca was brave enough uh, to stick to his principles um, to his political principles, but um, uh, like many of his colleagues, he was forced um, into exile. Those who stayed had to sort of readjust uh, their political creed to earn the trust of the new regime uh, while closing their eyes um, uh, to the persecution of those who continue to call for a multiracial uh, democracy uh, like Joana Sinion. I want to end with this dialogue. Um, um, between Matias Mboa and his colleague, uh, Angelo Shishawa. And I translate this um, uh, from the memoirs uh, uh, that uh, Mboa published in 2009. Uh, I've also had the, um, the chance to interview him. And what is fascinating about Mboa is that he was the closest friend uh, of Samora Michel, and they both fled together to join Fulimo uh, in 1963 from Lorenzo Marx. But while Samora Machel was sent to lead the struggle in one of the Northern Fronts, uh, Mboa was sent back to Lorenzo Marx to organize the Fourth Military Region, um, where he was immediately arrested uh, and spent nearly 10 years in prison. Yet he remained uh, the main leader of the Southern activists. And uh, soon after the April coup, he regrouped his network um, and uh, coordinated the pro Frelimo uh, campaigns together with the Democrats. And here he is uh, uh, leading the first delegation of the Democrats that visited Frelimo in Dar es Salaam in May 1974. Um, and he's reunited uh, with his body, <coughs> Samora Michel. And the figure in the middle here is uh, um, Tanzania's president, Julius Nyerere. Now, Moore returned to Lorenzo Marx with a, uh, with a mission. 
um, and that was to build uh, the party's, uh, um, the first party headquarters in the capital and set the first party cells um, among the former political prisoners. And this is the context in which uh, uh, this, uh, this dialogue took place. Um, as Moa is telling uh, his colleague what um, he had just learned uh, from the trip um, and expressing his anxieties and fears um, um, uh, because of the uh, ideological orientation uh, of, the new, of the new regime. Although Mboa tried to readjust uh, his political creeds, uh, like most people, uh, his fears were not unjustified. The Portuguese had incarcerated him uh, for being a revolutionary. Uh, his old friend would incarcerate him uh, for not being revolutionary enough. His dream was the road not taken. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Mashaba, for that very enlightening talk. Um, so now we're opening up the, I believe the chat is open for Q&A. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to send them to me or to send them to the, uh, to the chat and I'll read them aloud. Um, Um, yeah, so I, I have a question. Um, I was wondering if you could elaborate on the role of women um, and the way that they sort of were reimagining their place and position in relation to politics in relation to the state in this moment. Hmm, very good question. Um, It's interesting that we don't uh, we don't have many um, uh, uh, um, female voices um, in this story, <clears throat> and I think that's why uh, Joana Simiao is such an interesting figure. Of course, um, she's she's uh, she's she's privileged in that she's educated educated in Portugal, um, has uh, uh, um, uh, important connections um, in the colonial establishment. Um, a part of which was actually used to incriminate her um, and uh, associate her with the, with the Portuguese secret police. And that is what Frelim used to condemn her <clears throat> and uh, for treason um, and, and execute her. Although the, 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 um, um, uh, um, we are not sure if, if those connections were actually true, uh, it could have been fabricated. Um, uh, no one has really uh, um, dug into, into that particular story. Um, but there aren't many, uh, actually, the, the, I don't see any other uh, um, 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 female uh, actors <clears throat> who are expressing uh, uh, political, political uh, views in this particular period. There are women within Frelimo, um, and Frelimo <clears throat> uh, creates um, in the, in the mid-60s um, a female detachment, um, but uh, its position was always... Uh, um, I wouldn't say marginal, but uh, uh, sort of subservient, um, 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 and and we, we we see very very little uh, politically speaking. Of course, uh, one of the figure within that uh, um, um, detachment, uh, you know, Jacinda Michelle, reflects about uh, the the position of women, and one of the perhaps interesting um, and and, and um, innovative, I would say. Uh, um, uh, claims is the is the idea of uh, emancipation of women, which for Lima would use um, has you know has their sort of uh, um, one of their major sort of uh, uh, trump cards um, in their political um, uh, work. Um, <clears throat> but 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 again, the, the idea of women emancipation um, is, um, is is defined uh, within the umbrella uh, of of a state led. Um, um, nation building uh, and all the constraints that come with it. Um, the scholars who, who work on this, uh, on this particular field um, um, of gender um, and particularly in Mozambique uh, have, have shown uh, how problematic uh, and contradictory um, some of the uh, 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 ideas around uh, women emancipation. <clears throat> so that's why I tend actually to uh, not consider a number of those figures, uh, female figures within Frelimo. 
um, as political um, um, as, 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 as political figures in that most of the times they reverberated um, um, the um, uh, the policies that are defined not by women but uh, by um, uh, by men like Samora Michelle um, and others. Thank you. Um, so our first question is from Kevin Irakose. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. Um, so Kevin, thanks you for this engaging talk. Um, and he says, thinking with Tanzania as a ground from which Filimo operated, are there specific ways in which the political atmosphere in Tanzania shaped or affected Filimo leaders in their politics or tactics? Mm. Uh, absolutely, yes, uh, Kevin, but uh, here is the interesting thing. Uh, Frilimo felt that uh, the, the, the interesting thing about Tanzania is that it provides the environment um, for uh, not only Frilimo, but almost all uh, Southern African nationalist movements uh, to come together um, and, um, and train and uh, prepare their, um, <coughs> uh, 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 their struggle. Um, but for some of these nationalist movements, and I think Frelimo in particular, uh, the very uh, sort of um, um, uh, regime of, of, of Yudish Nyerere himself uh, was not socialist enough. And this is part of the sort of the, the criticism uh, that uh, the younger generation of African socialists, um, the so-called Afro-communists uh, or Afro-Marxists, um, uh, uh, this is the criticism that they had um, over the older generation um, of, um, of African socialists, uh, like Nyerere, um, uh, like Nkrumah, like Singor, et cetera. Um, so um, uh, you're right in that the, the environment that um, 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 Tanzania provides is, is important uh, for the formation of uh, Frelimo's um, I, uh, um, uh, ideological leanings. Um, but Frelimo is also uh, uh, able to transcend um, um, Tanzania's own socialism uh, and go for something that uh, was more radical um, in that regard. So our next question is from Professor of English Katijan Heka, um, and he thanks you for the talk. And he asks, do you see Mozambique as exceptional in the road not taken? And what lesson does your insightful social history of decolonization offer the contemporary investment in the idea? Uh, thank you, Kajin. Uh I won't say that Mozambique is, uh, is unique. Um, um, there, there are similar stories. Um, it's, it, I would say it's different um, in that uh, um, here is a settler uh, uh, colonial uh, uh, society uh, that is battling uh, with the question of how to deal with that legacy. Um, from the vantage point of a society that has seen other uh, uh, colonial, central colonial societies deal with the same issue. Uh, Rhodesia went in a very specific direct, uh, direction of you know, a white minority rule, a sort of a pirate state. Um, Algeria in 1961 had gone uh, uh, on a different extreme uh, you know, of settlers leaving um, uh, the colony. Uh, in the most inglorious way, um, destroying uh, uh, things um, 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 and, and fracturing really um, uh, the possibility of relations um, between Algeria and France, um, and of course South Africa. And so, Mo and Mozambique is, uh, is surrounded by by these neighbors. Um, so it's different in 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 in, in the sense that um, there were lessons around, um, and, and 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 those lessons sort of gave. Um, a fuel to the debate about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the political uh, possibilities of the, of the colonial rule. Um, but if you think about how the, the, the process unfolded, uh, you could act, actually say that it was quite similar to the Algerian case, because in the end, it all collapsed um, and settlers leave um, 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 uh, en masse, uh, destroying, uh, uh, taking everything that they could, I mean, furniture, <laughs> Um, uh, um, um, uh, kitchenware um, and destroying what they could not, killing cattle, um, 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 destroying machinery, uh, um, 
pouring cement on buildings uh, so that they, they, they will not be used. A very vengeful kind of uh, exit. Um, and, it, 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 and it has to do with the fact that the, the moment of transition was so uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, tense uh, and, and full of those sort of racial tensions um, that uh, were not given space to sort of resolve themselves um, by Portugal deciding uh, to hand power uh, almost unilaterally um, to Felim. Thank you. Um, our next question is from Marissa Mormon, and she thanks you for this fascinating talk and said it's great to see you. Um, so the question is, um, I'm struck by the resonances and the differences with Angola in the same period. Could you say a bit more about Mboa's concern about the militarization of Limo? I have heard similar critiques of the MPLA. Is it a result of the armed struggle, the particular context in Dar es Salaam and of Cold War involvement or something else? Uh, hi, hi, Marisa. Um, uh, I'm glad you're here. Um, I think I think it's because, uh, unlike Angola, where you, you uh, the the alignments are sort of almost um, uh, predefined by the fact that you, you already have three nationalist movements uh, that have significant following, um, that it gives no space somewhat for the uh, rise of this political movement um, um, outside of those uh, three. Um, in the case of Mozambique, um, um, Frelimo is the only really uh, uh, major uh, nationalist movement um, with, with a, you know, a very significant uh, machine. Of course, there were you know, some uh, dissenting um, movements, Coremo and others, but they were not uh, uh, um, as organized uh, and significant as for them. And I think uh, because of that, um, um, uh, the situation in Mozambique was, uh, was a bit different. I would also add that unlike Angola, where the war uh, was more sort of intimate, it was, uh, the war was fought um, not far away sometimes from, uh, from Luanda. Uh, and some of the uh, initial uh, 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 cleavages happened uh, in, you know, uh, nearby, um, so that most people knew <laughs> about the MPLA. Uh, some some people knew about uh, uh, FNLA um, uh, and, and other movements, despite the Portuguese um, efforts to uh, keep people ignorant about the war. In the case of Mozambique, the war happened um, very very far from the major centers of uh, settler um, and uh, um, um, a major settlement um, uh, in Mozambique, um, uh, in the fringes up in the north, uh, where there's very, very, um, 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 the area is not as densely populated. And I think because of that, the Portuguese are able uh, to keep Frelimo at bay um, and uh, very few people outside <coughs> Uh, very few people knew uh, about uh, about Frelimo. Uh, it's only those people who had connections, uh, who had connections with the uh, underground uh, networks. And I think because of that, uh, when when the the, the coup happened, um, uh, people felt um, the the sort of the urgency to sort of fill some sort of gap politically, and that's why you you, you see the sprout of uh, of so many uh, uh, political parties in in this. In this sense, um, within the sort of the Portuguese uh, space, um, this is quite unique, um, and I think it's because of, um, of sort of the geography of the uh, of the struggle um, itself. So our next question is from Eric Burton, um, and he thank Eric thanks you for the interesting talk and asks um, regarding the last point raised in the Chicago. Shachava Mboa conversation, socialism as threatening in its communist version, where there are also concerns about Tanzanian socialism and the replication of certain aspects of Ujamaa in Mozambique, given that many exiles had firsthand experience of it, experiences of it. Uh, thank you, Eric. Again, um, um, Furim actually felt that the, the um, um, uh, the, the sort of the efforts at social engineering uh, that uh, Tanzania implemented were quite mild. Of course, for them, is learning from Tanzania uh, and uh, attempted to replicate some some of the same sort of uh, uh, schemes, uh, villagization uh, being one of them. Um, 
um, but they, they felt that um, 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 they could have a, a better approach. Um, and that's why, uh, unlike, uh, say, some of the um, uh, anti-urban campaigns that Tanzania um, 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 uh, implemented uh, that you know Andrew Vasca uh, documents quite well, and, and you know you and other uh, other scholars um, compared with you know the Mozambique uh, campaigns, the, those Tanzanian experiments were mild; uh, they, they were not really as violent. Um, and um, in the case of Mozambique, Frelimo creates camps, uh, internment camps, to detain people um, uh, uh, who in Tanzania would be called you know the, the um, uh, the, the, um, uh, the black suckers um, and other sort of undesirables. <clears throat> so they take they they take a, a, a step further um, by believing that they had a more sort of uh, uh, rounded, more comprehensive understanding of socialism and what it was uh, needed uh, to do to transform society. So our next question is from Allegra Yida, a PhD student in Yale's Department of History, and she thanks you for the great talk and asks, uh, what was the role for censorship? For example, was literature that was seen as political censored? Absolutely. I'll give you an example. And this is something, of course, <clears throat> a number of people have worked on this, uh, but I came across uh, this uh, file in the archives uh, uh, some time ago, and it was uh, a report of, uh, as um, 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 a student, um, uh, elementary student, uh, who was found with, uh, I mean, the teacher uh, was, you know, making the normal round and, and, and saw the name Folimo in the, in the notebook. And the kid was, uh, was arrested um, and taken to jail. It turned out that uh, the, the, the kid didn't even know what, um, uh, what Folimo was. Uh, the uncle wrote that. Um, in the notebook, um, probably the, the it was his not notebook, and he forgot to uh, erase just the just the word, um, and uh, he gave it to his nephew, and um, uh, and it, it resulted in a in a in a in a you know, you know um, in in detention. Uh, so the the, the Portuguese uh, uh, secret police is uh, the regime uh, as a whole is very nervous. Uh, 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 because of the of the insurgency, and Marisa Murman who is here has you know written uh, fabulously about the nervousness of the Portuguese uh, of the Portuguese regime, um, and of course they 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 have links with uh, some of the best uh, secret services um, um, uh, in the world, um, and it is actually through them that they're able to um, assassinate uh, some of the uh, leaders. Uh, uh, of Frelimo, uh, but also uh, PHC um, um, in connections uh, with internal uh, um, uh, dissidents. Um, so, so the 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 level of uh, censorship um, um, and uh, policing is so intense um, that I see very little examples uh, out there um, in Africa, at least for the for the for the duration. Uh, of this of this effort, I mean the wars, the Portuguese, uh, the, the wars in the Portuguese space took uh, uh, 13, 14, uh, 14, uh, 14 years. So our next question is from Esteban Salas, um, and so Esteban asks, what was the role of local rulers as intermediaries of power in rural, rural areas around the country? Hello, Esteban. Uh, good question. It's more. It's more. Uh, it depends on the location of local rulers. Um, I can. I can say about the rulers in the areas where the war was uh, was going on in the north, and that's that. Uh, you you see um, 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 uh, uh, competition between the warring factions to uh, win the, the hearts and minds uh, of of the people. I mean, for them, is a guerrilla. Um, and they try to win over uh, the rulers. And if you, if you succeed in that, of course, you control the population. And the Portuguese will also try to do the same thing. Um, so in many ways, uh, 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 traditional authorities uh, are caught in between. 
um, and 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 there are examples of of, of some some uh, chiefs who um, were um, um, supported for Limu, uh, from the very beginning, like Chief Mataka in the Assam. Um, and others who did not. Um, and uh, of course, your, uh, your role during the struggle uh, defines your fate after the struggle. Um, and some of those who uh, were on the side of the Portuguese uh, willingly or unwillingly uh, um, um, paid, paid a heavy price. Um, in fact, um, Filimo will, will go uh, all the way to try to, um, um, uh, to ban uh, or eliminate uh, uh, traditional authority. That didn't really necessarily have to do with the war itself, uh, but uh, it was part of this whole idea of building a nation um, 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 by by killing the tribe. Um, <clears throat> so it's 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 more complicated in that um, in that regard. So the next question is from Zachary Guthrie. Um, and so Zachary asked, I'm curious what you would say about the role of regional divisions and or the goal of maintaining national slash territorial unity in shaping the political debates in LM, especially thinking about the games that, gains that Filimo made in Manica and Sofala and the corresponding settler backlash and also the legacy of Urea, Simongo within Filimo. Mm. Great questions. Uh, lo lots, of great, lots of friends here. Uh, hi, Zach. Um, and congratulations for your book, by the way. Uh, the regional divide is an important one. Um, um, and again, I think it has to do with uh, um, what I was, uh, uh, I was saying when I was responding to, to Marisa's question about uh, the geography of the war, um, because the Portuguese are able to contain Frolimo um, um, up in the north. And it's not until the, uh, you know, 1972, 73, that uh, Frolimo is able to uh, penetrate um, uh, uh, in central Mozambique um, and, and start incursions in uh, 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 Zambezia province, for example. And uh, they only reached Manik and Sofala in 1974, um, uh, you know, uh, right at the end. Um, and they didn't have enough time to, to mobilize. And perhaps what is interesting is, is how um, um, the, the, the ways in which certain regions responded uh, to the guerrilla mobilization um, uh, shaped the politics of Mozambique after the war. Uh, Zambezi, for example, is a place where um, Frelimo had a hard time uh, um, um, campaigning um, and um, didn't really succeed. And, and some of that uh, sort of uh, resentment uh, 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 lived through all the way to this day. Um, it, Zambezi is a place where Frelimo hardly wins elections uh, and, and to win elections is a really real battle there. Um, and it goes back to, to those uh, failed attempts to, to penetrate that area. Um, the South, uh, in part because is the, um, um, you know, um, um, the native home of the major leadership of Frelimo um, had always uh, um, um, had that sort of um, uh, th that sense of, uh, of, um, um, uh, of ownership, I would say, uh, of, of, of the movement. And I think uh, uh, this was one of the strategies uh, that the Democrats and, um, and the, uh, you know, uh, Matthias Mbowe and his colleagues uh, used to say, you see, you know, these are our children, these are our brothers. Samora Machal lived here. Um, Mundani came from, from there. Um, and I think this has, you know, uh, has had um, um, an important influence in the politics of Mozambique uh, till this day. So the next question comes from a guest attendee. Um, and they say that you mentioned that the Filimo took a dictatorial socialistic path, given the experience of other underdeveloped countries such as Turkey under Ataturk and India after independence. Do you think with hindsight that there would be that there would have been any other econo economically viable routes in order to maintain independence and sovereignty? Hmm. That's a very difficult question um, uh, and one that any historian would have um, trouble with. Uh, to sort of to to think to, uh, teleologically, you know, to think in hindsight, um, and I don't think I can make um, um, 
uh, a historical argument or formulate uh, a historical answer to, to a question like that. But um, if you want to, I mean, if, if you had to think about this, um, there were other examples. Botswana was one example that didn't go, uh, um, uh, didn't take the same route as many African countries um, and chose democracy and uh, uh, more participatory uh, uh, political systems. Um, so it's not that there were no alternatives. Um, uh, otherwise, you know, these people would not have actually debated those possibilities and those alternatives. It means that there were alternatives, um, but um, it was a choice that was made. Um, by, by the Frelimo leadership. So Nisha asks, um, could you please speak a bit on the anti-racial struggles that were happening along and together with these independence and socialist movements? Hmm. Mozambique being in Southern Mozambique, um, uh, in Southern Africa, where uh, race uh, was the central uh, topic, uh, race and racial relations were the central topic of all uh, uh, nationalist uh, movements. Um, uh, uh, it, it was uh, uh, it was to say inevitable. It's it's, it's again um, um, thinking and speaking teleologically. Um, but it was quite natural that this would be uh, one of the major um, um, issues of debate um, in the struggles in the region. And this is completely different uh, from, say, West Africa, um, um, where the conversation was, was different, um, precisely because there's little uh, um, settlement, colonial uh, 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 settler societies. Um, and all nationalist movement in Southern Africa, all of them uh, wrestled with ideas of, uh, um, uh, of racism um, and how to deal with the issues of racism if um, viable societies are to be built in the region. South African, uh, the South African AMC is wrestling with this uh, uh, idea, um, ZANU um, and, um, uh, and ZANLA, also dealing with this uh, uh, with this question, and of course, Fulimo, um is, is dealing with this um, precisely because it's the big issue um, 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 in the region. <clears throat> this is, you know, the the, the, the main area of uh, of white settlement in colonial Africa, and and that question was uh, was was uh, was was central uh, to the political struggles in in the region. Now. Uh, how different those debates were. Um, this is a much, much uh, bigger question um, that uh, we would need uh, way more time um, uh, to talk about uh, here. And I, I have to confess, it's not, it's not um, 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 a topic in which I, I actually work on. Um, so our next question is from Brad Brockman, and Brad asks, if the main difference between Free Limo and independent parties was on the question of democracy, what were the other important differences in terms of their visions for an, for an independent Mozambique? Uh, hello, Brad. Uh, um, I mean, the, the, there are economic debates um, um, uh, as well. Um, um, but I'm, I'm at the early stage of the project. I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, going through the, uh, the material and haven't gone through um, not even 10% uh, 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 of what is out, uh, out there. Um, and uh, I'm yet to actually see what other debates uh, were happening. Um, 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 but uh, they, they, they are talking about economic uh, um, possibilities. They are talking about um, uh, uh, diplomatic uh, policies, for example, um, the question of South Africa, um, uh, the issue of Rhodesia, uh, how would uh, Mozambique position itself, uh, given the fact that there are two sort of uh, white minority uh, regimes, one of them is a party state that depends uh, on Mozambique uh, for its uh, um, access to, to, the, to the world, um, in the case of Rhodesia. Um, and those debates uh, uh, were on the table. What to do, for example, uh, with the investments um, that were uh, heavily owned by uh, South African capital. Um, um, 
given that Frelimo from the very beginning and precisely because of its intimate relationship uh, with, with the South African ANC uh, was, was thinking how, 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 how to reconcile um, and have, uh, uh, its anti-apartheid uh, stand and its support for, 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 um, uh, for the struggle in South Africa with the fact that Mozambique was a, somewhat a sub-colony of South Africa, economically speaking. The dependence of Mozambique on South Africa was, uh, uh, is, and uh, uh, will continue to be huge. So our next question is from Edward Alpers. Um, and so Edward asks, can you say a bit more about the iconography of the last photograph? I recognize Aquino, Marcelino, Ian, and is that Ganho in the second row? Sorry if I butchered all those names. Um, and But who are the others and what tendencies did they represent? Uh, Ned, my goodness. I wish I could see all of these people. Um, uh, so here is... Um, 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 uh, Zekra Verinha, the poet. Um, this here is Josephat Machel. This is the younger brother, younger of the older brother of Samora Machel, uh, but he's the brother of Samora Machel. Um, and uh, Joaquin Shisanu here. Um, I think uh, this is Jacinto Veloso, uh, the security guy. Um, and here is, you know, one of the uh, um, key leaders of the, uh, uh, of the Democratic de Mozambique, uh, Rui Nogar, um, uh, the poet. And of course, uh, the, the great painter, Malangatana. <clears throat> this is the vice president of Frelimo, Marcelino dos Santos. Um, and I think, I think this lady uh, is Mutemba, uh, Eulalia Mutemba, probably. I can't actually remember. Um, um, uh, I don't know these figures um, in the back. What is interesting about this, uh, this uh, photograph is that um, they are visiting Fulimo uh, to, on the one hand, um, uh, to get orientations from the party, what to do. Uh, on the other hand, uh, to see um, if Fulimo would be willing to sit and talk with the new Portuguese government. And I think in part because of that, uh, Frelimo sees them with some sort of um, um, uh, skepticism. Uh, and it's interesting actually when you read some of the, uh, uh, the news uh, cover of this particular event, when this you know, group of Democrats uh, 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 arrives in, in, in Dar es Salaam, um, they are all uh, welcomed, but uh, when they go into the headquarters of Frelimo, um, Shisano is actually the one who says that, well, we, you know, uh, we're happy to receive um, these brothers of ours, but they should not see themselves as belonging to Frelimo. And this has to do with the fact that Frelimo is very, very uh, um, um, disconfiado. Of, uh, of people who are coming from the areas that were heavily under the control of the Portuguese, including uh, the former uh, 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 political prisoners, uh, you know, Flimo operatives. Uh, and they believe that because these people lived under the, you know, uh, direct control and, and, and guard of, of PIDE, of the, 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 the Portuguese secret police, um, they lost um, their revolutionary zeal. Um, they are no longer on the camp of Frelimo. Um, um, and uh, that's why, you know, um, uh, right after independence, uh, Frelimo and Michelle organize and direct a huge session with these, with, you know, hundreds of uh, former political prisoners um, for months in which they have to confess um, their deeds uh, um, 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 uh, in jail um, and whether they remain truthful. Um, to the party or not. And uh, <laughs> disregarding the fact that, uh, in, in fact, they, they lost control uh, of, of, of what the party was and how the party evolved. Um, and those frictions explain uh, these uh, sort of this dialogue here that Mboa, uh, Mboa records. Um, um, and you, you, can, you can feel actually reading his memoir. Um, that he still, uh, he, he, you know, he still holds this sort of grudge uh, over his old body. Um, but it's a testament uh, as to you know, how these 
uh, these people went into different uh, into different directions, um, and and that uh, and they clash um, after independence. So our final question comes from Sarah Daly, um, and Sarah asks: To what extent is today's Trilimo a, continu a continuation or dis discontinuation of what you described in the 1970s, specifically in terms of aggressive approaches to political consolidation? Mm. Hello, Sarah. Um, Trilimo has changed. Um, Trilimo is now a party of uh, uh, of capitalists. Um, who are, you know, looking for uh, uh, mechanisms of economic extroversion, and uh, the the only thing that really remained is um, is um, um, is the struggle to uh, to keep the gate uh, to be in power, um, uh, regardless. Um, and this is this is the debate that is is happening uh, till this day. Um, it's no longer the same uh, the same party, um, and there were uh, somewhat uh, hope from you know um, uh, a certain generation of Mozambicans. I would say I'm part of that generation. I'm no longer speaking as a story, I'm speaking as a Mozambican that the party would split, um, and that would be the hope uh, for the country. Uh, unfortunately, that did not happen, um, and. Um, uh, uh, the, it's, it's a party that lost its principles. But again, Mozambique uh, uh, inherited uh, sort of the, um, the, 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 the traditions of uh, uh, single party politics, um, not only because Sri is still in power, but the whole uh, culture um, of, uh, of party centrism um, is, 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 still, uh, um, is still present. Um, and it's not only in the ruling parties, it's also present in the, in the very weak uh, uh, opposition parties. I mean, the two dominant parties in Mozambique is the Front de Libertação de Mozambique, the Front for the Liberation of Mozambique, and uh, Renamo de Resistência Nacional Mozambicana, the Mozambican National Resistance. This party should have been, uh, should be, should belong to history because the very names of this party uh, show that their mission is over. I mean, Fulimo liberated the country, um, uh, uh, and Renamo resisted against Fulimo, so, and uh, th those politics are, are over. Um, uh, Mozambique needs a new beginning, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we are not, we are not getting it, and I don't think we will have it. But again, this is a Mozambican speaking, no longer story. <laughs> I'll challenge you. Um, well, thank you so much, Professor Mashava, for being so generous to sharing your work and for uh, have, holding such an illuminating conversation. So I, I ask the rest of you to please thank, join me in thanking him. Um, and yeah, that concludes our talk. Thank you for all of the very enlightening questions via the Q&A. And please join us uh, for the next CIS lecture talk on March 30th. The title is Beauty, Diplomacy, uh, Embodying an Emerging Nation. Uh, the speaker, Kami Balugun uh, from the University of Oregon. We look forward to seeing you there on March 30th at 4.30 p.m. And thank you for attending today's talk.